How are you, Kathy? I'm doing so great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. I'm so excited to see you. I'm really, really pleased to be able to share this chat with you today. Oh, I am so excited too. It's been too long and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to soak in a little bit of the down under spirit right now. <laughs> yeah. I think you were just so, yeah, you, you got the spirit already. Yes. <laughs> I was really hoping uh, when we organized this chat that you would turn up with your unicorn um uh you with your yeah with yourself <laughs> and you have you haven't disappointed yes it helps that my official business headphones come with the unicorn horn attached um <laughs> so that's pretty much like a, a given but if needed i do have emergency uh horns and uh magic just in case but my default is good to go yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, okay, so Kathy, I want um, our audience to get to know you a little bit. So um, tell me, what is it that you love to do? Tell me a little bit about yourself. So what is in your spare time? What do you do for fun? What sort of, you know, um, what sort of things do you do that, yeah, just keep you busy when, if you have any spare time? <laughs> I have a bad habit of um, commodifying most of my hobbies. <laughs> uh, so I do, I currently have three active podcasts that, um, oh, wow. I love to do and are super fun. I'm planning out a fourth, but that one will only come, it will start when the one of the three is finished. Um, so one of them is a podcast where my friend Jean McDonald and I talk about each episode of the TV show Orphan Black. Um, it's the first time that I've watched it and she's seen it multiple times. And so there's no spoilers and we watch episode by episode. So that one, we are in the middle of season four out of five seasons. So we're almost done with that. And it's been such a joy to really watch a show purposefully um, yeah. and really concentrate on a single episode instead of just binge watching everything, which is really fun. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And then I have a show called The Robot and the Unicorn, where I talk to my friend Alex Cox about life and everything. Um, there's about 10 years apart. We have live very different lives. Um, our lifestyles are different, our personalities are different, and yet we're really, really good friends. And so we kind of just talk about how we see the world in a different way um, and hopefully allow other people to kind of acknowledge the fact that their differences are, are, are okay and that it's, there, there is no true normal. Awesome. Um, and then I also do a show called Friends in Your Ears, where I talk to two podcasters about their favorite podcasts and their history of podcasting. Um, so it's kind of very meta about podcasts, but it's just super fun, lighthearted happiness. There is, it, somehow we manage to have some other deeper conversations in it too, but it's all like just really happy. And I love in, uh, putting stuff out there that's just really joyful. Um, and it, so that's kind of what I do in my free time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. I think that's um, something that you, people like us, when I say people like us, people like us that have ideas, we just can't stop. You just have to be producing yes. and creating and creating. <laughs> yes. No, it. it's so true. It's so true. And if I can get a little bit of financial kickback from doing it, then yeah, by golly, I'm going to do it. But I do it for the love of what I do not just like, oh, I'm going to go do this because I can make money from it. Like, that's not how I do anything that I do um, and because life's too short to, to think that way. Um, but in true, like, if I'm really like taking a break, uh, which usually happens every evening after dinner, um, unless I have an emergency for many of my clients, I tend to go to bed with my daughter at 7 30 she's in bed and we're snuggling and reading um until she goes to sleep at eight and i tend to just read until i go to sleep as well and that could be anywhere from 805 <laughs> last night i went to bed about one o'clock so like yeah. it depends on what i'm reading what i'm enjoying yeah. kind of me time and that's that's something that I just I love being able to schedule into my day 
Yeah, good on you because it's so important to be able to. Um, I find personally for myself, you know, especially since we met, you know, um, always chasing to have something done. It's yeah, very easy to get burnt out, and yes. uh, yeah, so that that yeah, that me time. Um, definitely, it's starting to become a trendy thing now. Uh, people are starting to realize it should have always been there that self care but um yeah it's it's like uh it feels like for me i don't know about you kathy i don't know if you've noticed it, it feels like there is definitely a um uh, an awakening um in, in like globally and uh just people are starting to wake up to realize that self love and self care is 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 really important so that's why i say trendy this <laughs> many times seems to be hey let's keep it going make it cool to not be busy all the time because like it's so important to do things that you enjoy just because you enjoy them and really like finding things to take care of yourself and that's something i mean as a caregiver myself like it's, I know how important it is to take care of me because I can't take care of my daughter and my husband if I am not healthy and if I'm not together. And if I don't have my stuff like going, I can't, yeah. I can't yeah. take care of them. Definitely. Wise, wise words. I know someone, one of my mentors said to me years ago, he said, uh, yeah, you can't pour from an, an empty cup. Yeah. yeah that's like, one of my all time favorites. I love that. So saying. true. It's so, so, so true. true. So that you mentioned Ryan there, let's, let's um, have a bit of a chat about um, Ryan and yourself. Firstly, what I'd like to do is um, get to know a little bit about yourself and Ryan. How did you guys meet? We actually met because of an online community uh, based around a book series called The Wheel of Time, which you may have heard of because it's coming out into an Amazon television show. Oh, um, wow. it's a 14 series epic fantasy, like in the style of Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. Um, and so we met because we had read the books and we joined just this online forum that actually had real life events too. Um, and so we met in the fall of 2002 at an event. We were both with different people. Um, and so we just like met and then we got to be friends and a couple of years later, uh, he asked if he could call me and we talked for about four hours that night and I was not a phone person. Oh. Uh, and of course it was back in 2004 when like you had limited number of phone minutes. And so we would wait until after nine o'clock at night when we could talk for free. Cheaper. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it was, it was amazing. And we just kind of were like, Hey, you're my person. Um, and yeah. just clicked. And about a month later, he asked me to marry him at <gasps> Chicago airport, which is where we had our first kiss. Cause at the time I was working at Walt Disney world and he was living in Indiana. Uh, and so it just kind of whirlwind romance. Um, and we were married about a year and a half after that. Oh my goodness. That is well win. That's so cool. You just, you <laughs> yeah. really did just know. I hey. just knew. Um, and it was like, it was, I mean, so many things could have been terrible because neither of us had really had a serious relationship before. Um, but we both went into it because of our friendship that had been developed on the internet and because our courtship was on the phone, communication was so important to both of us. Um, and it remains important even after his stroke and his ability to speak is limited. Um, thank thankfully his brain function is still significant. So he has the ability to understand and like his cognitive ability is all there. So he knows exactly what you're saying, even if he can't necessarily have an easy conversation back with you. So I can talk to him and he knows exactly what I'm talking about and what I'm explaining. And he has all of his memories and all of that. And so communication is still extremely important Mm -hmm. in our marriage and it's been 14 years, 14 years that we've been together and 13 wow. years of marriage. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Now I, um, now 
let's have a look. Let's have a chat yeah. about with. Um, so, how long um, after you got married? So, when did Ryan have his stroke? He had a stroke in the fall of 2010. So okay. in one month and 10 days, it will be his eighth anniversary. Yeah. We wow. call it stroke anniversary in our yeah. house. So let's, um, I just want to, obviously as any young couple, when you first, um, you know, get married, fall deeply in love and make your plans for life. Um, can you tell me, like, I, I mean, it might be a little bit hard to go into this, but like, um, in terms of, you know, do, is that something that you used to do, plan ahead and have dreams together? I mean, it's so, it's so odd because we always, like, we knew we would, we didn't have any specific dreams. Like, on our 10th anniversary, we're going to Hawaii or anything <laughs> like that. We all... Yeah we just kind of existed, I think, which is not, not necessarily, um, it sounds a lot lackluster, but we, we both were in our lives ready for whatever the world was going to take us, whatever mm -hmm. it was going to give us. Um, yeah. he like worked a variety of jobs when we, um, first got together, uh, I was still finishing my degree, um, and we got married a semester before I graduated. Um, and so we we kind of always knew that I was going to be the main breadwinner of the family just because of my college education and the the skills that I had and, and that sort of stuff. But he really enjoyed doing a variety of things. And so we decided that he could go, not could, like he went back to school um, to become a massage therapist, mm -hmm. which was great. That was something that he was really passionate about. Um, except once he graduated and he started working, he realized he didn't like the business side of it so much. Um, and it was hard for him to kind of have that because massage therapy involves um, kind of a, a subcontractor type gig. So like you might have a table that you rent or, but you're still responsible for your own clients, that sort of mindset. Um, and so we started talking about possibly having children uh, and what that would look like. Um, and he ended up like he would have one or two days that he would do massaging. And then he was working at uh, a local cafe like as a cook. Um, and when we decided to have children, we're like, look, financially, it doesn't make sense for you to be working because the, your income wouldn't pay for a babysitter. Yeah. So let's just have you be a stay at home dad, which he was super excited about. And I was super excited about because he still is the most patient person I've ever met. Um, he's so good with kids. He has this, uh, just the magical ability to work with children. And so I knew that this would be way better for him to be raising our daughter yeah. uh, than to try and have him find a job that could pay for daycare or whatnot. Like this is, this is what he was meant to do was to be cool. a dad and to be in charge of Avi yeah. full, full time. And so it ended up, I'm so thankful that that's the situation that worked out that we were able to financially get by, especially because then when he did have his stroke, we didn't have to replace his income because we already had that in play. Uh -huh. We just had to work on finding a way for daycare. And we're so blessed with the circle that we had and that we were able to have a very significantly discounted place that would take our daughter so that I could continue to work and, you know, yeah. raise her without having to necessarily worry about how am I going to pay crazy bills. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. another thing added on top of it. So yeah. um, <clears throat> I want to learn a little bit about Ryan's stroke. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> yeah. So tell us how it happened um, uh, a little bit more about, yeah, like the severity, what, what, you know, what caused it, the prognosis, that sort of thing. Yeah. So I woke up at three, three o'clock in the morning, uh, when he rolled over on our daughter, um, she was a 20, 
two months at the time and wow. slept in our bed. Uh, and he rolled over on her. And so she woke up crying and I woke up and I was like, well, that's weird. Uh, and I look over and he was doing this thing where he would roll on his side and he'd roll back and adjust the blanket. And he did that exact same motion three different times. Wow. And I was like, okay, that's odd. So I went to try and wake him up and he was not responsive and he, nothing was happening. He was not like flinching when I'd like shake him or anything. And I was like, okay, this is weird. So I called 911 and we had the, uh, the firemen come and like they gave him a pinprick and he's still not responsive. So we took him to the hospital and for the first probably four hours that we were in the ER, they were adamant that it was a drug overdose mm. um, because he still had some of the medication from his wisdom teeth removal in his blood system. So he was like, oh, well, this is a drug overdose. And I'm like, no, this is not a drug overdose. Oh. So at one point I realized that like, so he would stretch out, like, you know, when you're waking up and you're just like, oh, at the end and you start shaking it a little bit. So he was doing that, but it was only on one side of his body to where I was like, hey nurse, this is not normal. So they looked at the scans again and they realized that he had had a stroke. And the reason that he had a stroke was he had both of his carotid arteries tore on the inside of the artery. So wow. it was not like cut. So the outside of the artery was, was still solid, but the inside had torn. And on one side of it, the tear had caused a blood clot to, to like be created and it threw it up into the brain. And that's what caused the stroke. So once they realized that we transitioned to a new hospital to see if they could try and keep that pathway open yeah uh, so that blood could continue to get to the brain through those arteries uh by the time we transferred uh it was too late they had sealed um so the doctors were concerned about going in and trying to break it up because of the fact that it just tore in the first place that could mean that by trying to get in and like surgically open it back up again they could make it worse um, so now the only blood flow actually comes through the arteries in the back of the head instead of the two front ones. Um, so he's on a variety of medications to make sure that his blood pressure stays strong enough so that the blood will get to his brain, um, pain and nerve receptors and all sorts of medications and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, mm. But while we were in the hospital, they tried to figure out what actually caused the carotid dissection, carotid artery dissection, because it's very random, especially he was 27 when it happened. And it's like, that's odd, like plain and simple, just strange. Yeah, random. Uh, yeah. So they did so much genetic testing and like trying to see what caused it. And they still don't know a hundred percent. Um, but they think it's related to the fact that he has um, what's called alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which normally will cause issues for the lungs and the liver. So his mom has liver issues and he, his sister has lung issues. Um, but it presented in him by having his carotid arteries tear. Wow. So... Um the great news is that our daughter is also positive for that uh, genetic disorder. Wow. Um, so thankfully, we ha there's actually a, a pediatric specialist in my state that uh, deals with alpha-1. And so he has our daughter's records. Everything He's like, everything looks great. Let me know if you show any like lungs or liver issues and we'll yes. see her, but there was no need for actual, like any sort of treatment or anything for her. Yes. So yeah, we're just kind of like, all right. So yeah. Oh God. So <laughs> Not nerve wracking at no, all. It's, it, it's so many things. I'm just thinking like, um, you know, what's going through your head, but well, just, uh, just before we go into that. So 
Is there um, do, like is there any symptoms that, like other than being tested for it? Is there anything that can signal that you've got that deficiency that that gene? Not necessarily. It's just kind of a test, um, and it normally because it it doesn't necessarily present in. Uh, a significant number of symptoms usually like so the reason that we uh that his mom was tested um and the reason that he was tested before his stroke was because she was having some liver issues and so they went in and they they ran the full panel and they got triggered on this and so he was he got the uh test done as well just so that we knew so if any lungs or liver issues showed up, they would be aware of it. Right, right. So, so is it, and, and, in, and then in that case, is it just a, a, a matter of monitoring it? Uh, there's no sort of uh, way of knowing what can, yeah, what can happen? Yeah, like what will, like what the deficiency will affect. No, yeah. there's, there's, yeah, there's no really like, oh, if you have this, this is going to happen type of a thing. So like it, it just looks to wear because uh, her my mother in law's sisters don't really show don't have any symptoms yeah right. so like there's it's just kind of a, one of those things that's like oh it's good to know that this is here mm. and hopefully nothing will uh, show but it yeah. does mean that like we have a very good reason for her to, for our daughter to never smoke yeah. um, because smoking will exasperate issues yeah. and yeah, yeah so. She just won't ever smoke, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> I got to find those silver linings wherever I can. <laughs> well, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, wow. So how old was Ryan when it happened? 20... 27. Yeah. My gosh. So, Kathy, tell us a little bit about that. Like, you know, <laughs> you're in love, you're that young. Like, so, you know, when this is all happening, how are you coping? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I like kind of blocked it out. Uh, mm. So I have flashes of those memories because um, mm. in, in my life, I kind of do whatever needs to be done um, because that's what you have to do. Um, to finish my degree, I was driving two hours uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays down to school. I would take my classes and then I would drive two hours back because I was living at home, like trying to save money. And like, this was the best way to do it. And I did that for about a year and a half to finish my college degree. And now I'm just like, what the heck was I thinking? But at the time it made the most financial sense. It was the cheapest and least expensive way to do it. And so you just kind of do what has to be done. Yeah. Um, and I, the job that I was working at when this all happened was not very supportive. Mm -hmm. um, I was having so obviously I, so we, in the United States, we have a thing called, uh, the Fam family medical leave act, which means that you can't be fired once you're on that for like a medical reason. Like, so basically during his like hospital stay, I was uh, on this so that I could continue to like take days off to visit him in the hospital make sure he didn't die and make these medical decisions and that sort of thing. And they couldn't turn around and fire me. Um, unfortunately, uh, I have had a friend in the office that texted me and was like, Oh, Hey, by the way, our HR person is currently yelling on the phone with our lawyer trying to figure out how to get me fired. Like, uh. I mean, these were the things that I was dealing with. And I was just like, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. um, so once he became stable, so he was in the neuro ICU for a week um, and then the regular hospital for about three and a half weeks. And then he spent about four weeks in the rehab center. Um, and then when he finally came home, I was like, okay, I can't do this job anymore. Um, it had already been, just a horrible experience. Like the, I had been working there for almost five years and oh, this is goodness. how they were treating me. Um, it was just not, it was not good. Uh, 
And before then, the reason I had stayed there was because I was making project manager salary um, while doing the front desk because I had been a project manager before I got pregnant and had my daughter. And when I came back, they're like, hey, we'll have a job for you. You'll still make the same amount of money. Um, and then we'll just transition you back into a project manager role at some point. That never happened. And so I was just like, okay, well, you obviously don't appreciate the work that I'm doing here. So whatever. But the problem was, is I was making too much mm. as a front desk secretary receptionist. Nobody was going to hire me for that same amount with this specific job on my resume. So I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, thankfully, because of the social security disability, we were going to start getting monthly payments for Ryan because of his disability uh, that would help bridge the gap so I could get a different job mm -hmm. and we could still pay our bills. Yeah. So I uh, was able to quit that full-time gig and really start concentrating both on my business yeah. and like my family. And yeah. I had a part-time job and like just kind of was like, okay, let's do this. We're going to make this wow. real. Yeah. yeah. So you're dealing with having to juggle um, Ryan's health and, and care, uh, then the responsibility of keeping your family afloat and feeding them, and, but also your own, uh, your own mindset. And it sounds like yeah. you've just pushed yourself aside for the time being just to get ahead. Yeah, I kind of afloat. like, I, again, I don't really remember a lot during that time, um, just because I, I did what I had to do and yep. I still like, I definitely, I still had fun. I still would go yep. out with friends. Yep. Um, and I still like, cool. I, I, I always took care of myself because again, I knew how important it was. I, I didn't, I mean, at one point I, so Ryan came home in January um, actually the week after our daughter turned two. So we had a celebratory welcome home and two year old birthday party for Avi. Um, and Aww. two months later, I actually went to Vegas for a photography convention with a friend. I and like, so I had, you, had to, days, you know, yeah. like I, I had these breaks. It was all related to, yeah. you know, business related and like, let's yeah. learn some things and, and purposeful, but I, I was not afraid to, you know, take the time I for love myself. That. I love yeah. that. So, um, it sounds like you've got a good, um, a fairly solid support network around you then. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 My parents live close. I have, I'm in the hometown that I grew up in. Oh, and so I have a, a, a wide variety of wide range of ages of people that have supported me and us. And I just, I definitely could not have done any of this without them. Yeah. But I'm fully aware how incredibly blessed I was to have the support system that I had, because if we didn't have them, I, I don't, I don't know what yeah. would have happened. Cause I, um, like, so I guess, so it, because you've, you just sound like you've just, just got on with the job. You've just got on with, you know, having to, the responsibility of having to be the family carer. Um, so did you like, was, was there any hard times, really dark times that you had to deal with at all? Oh, I mean, there were definitely days where I would just be like, wouldn't it be nice? Let's just run away to Paris. I'm just going to like mm -hmm. pack my bag and I'm just going to go to Paris. Like, yeah. screw it all. You know, <laughs> obviously I didn't. Yeah. Um, I'm still in the States. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> uh, and I never actually would have, but every so often it was nice to just kind of like, what would I do? You know, just have, have those moments of, of brain relief and upon like once you actually sit down to start planning and you're just like, yeah, this is not actually what I want to do. Um, cool. that makes a difference, you know, cool. it, being able to do those dreams and, and pretend moments, you know, it kind of, is just like, not only is it a good like brain exercise, but it also really helps you understand how much you actually don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, I definitely, it was not easy. Um, again, I'm so thankful for the support system that I have in place. I'm really privileged that I had those people that were willing to put in so much time and effort because I could say, mom, would you take Avi for the night? I just can't. I just can't. Um, Mm. and so it definitely was not as easy as it sounds. You know, I've come to terms with this over the past eight years. You know, I've had, I've had a long time to really acknowledge the fact that this is my, my life. Um, and this is what my normal is. Um, and even now I'll have days where I'm just like, is Ryan going to be able to walk Avi down the aisle if she gets married? Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I want to, so, so what about Ryan? How did he cope? How did, you know, in terms of recovery, what was, you know, what was his challenges? What were his, like, how did, yeah, how did he cope? Yeah, he, so he's always had a history of depression um, mm-hmm. since high school. Uh, so he had that as yeah, like he very aware of that. Um, and surprisingly enough, for the first couple of years after his stroke, he didn't need any depression meds. Um, the wow. brain just kind of was like, yeah, you got enough to deal with. So I'm going to work on this right now. Um, and so his 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 physical disabilities right now are he can't feel anything on the right side of his body other than pain um and has no purposeful movement with the exception of his hip joint um so if you just touch him on the arm he doesn't feel it um if you like poke him with a a sharp object he feels that mm-hmm. um he is able to walk because he has a brace that keeps his foot up and because his hip works, he's able to kind of have that Mm -hmm. odd gait. Um, and his muscles like, so the body will move by itself. It will sometimes like start shaking or like just kind of like when he's yawning and stretching, it will stretch too. So the muscles are still active. Unfortunately, the brain just kind of it's almost like it's forgotten about the right side of the brain of the body yeah. and just like, I don't know what to do with this. And it just kind of sits there. So he just kind of hangs out every day. Um, and thankfully he's always been, you know, a homebody. He's always been like, I'd much rather stay at home and, and not do anything. Uh, and so it's kind of been very similar. Like it's been, okay, he plays, you know, World of Warcraft during the day and watches YouTube videos and stuff. And it's good because it allows him to work on his hand-eye coordination and like his cognitive abilities. And like, so he finds his ways to do, because, you know, we've done, we've done a variety of therapy, both physical and occupational and speech and whatnot. And he's pretty much at the plateau that he is going to be hopefully for the rest of his life, um, which hopefully will be a very long time. Um, but they, he's now at no pain too. So we've got his, wow. his drug regimen down with the exception of the occasional migraine. Um, he's in like maybe a pain level one occasionally, like, but for the most part, he's at no pain, which is really great because there was a period of time where he would be in like a level eight or nine pain in his leg for no reason. Like they couldn't find any physical thing wrong with it. And it's basically the nerves were just plugged into the brain and saying, Hey, I'm hurting here. And he just like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's kind of, um, and, and so Avi, she hasn't really, um, so she was still a baby, really, two years old. Um, So uh, in terms of, you know, having to deal with challenges for her, not really um, impacted as much as you guys, I I would imagine, or? Well, so it's it's funny you say that because we think we've hit like a new level of challenge with her. um, How old is Avi? 
So she's nine now. Nine now. Yep. Um, she has come. So it's almost as if she's now seeing past like just a week. Um, you know, the future is, is, is bigger than, you know, next week. Um, the future is large and like mentally coming to terms with the fact that her daddy is not going to magically get better. Mm. Um, and that he can't do what other daddies can do. Mm. Um, and so we've been like just having a couple rougher days the last couple months, just kind yeah. of like adjusting to it. And like a couple of weeks ago, we got back from Walt Disney World and it was an incredible trip. It was absolutely amazing. It looked uh, amazing. <laughs> it was so good. Uh, but it was hard that daddy couldn't go with us. You know, that was, yeah. That was, it was sad for her. Um, yeah. Daddy couldn't be there. And so there, there are definitely things because from what I can see, she's got quite a, um, obviously, you know, uh, uh, as a father-daughter relationship and, and being an only child, they've got quite a strong bond. Oh, my goodness. They have such a strong bond. Mm. They, there is so much love there because, you know, she spent her formative first two years of her life with daddy all day, every day. Yeah. Uh, that was her main, you know, parent and their bond has always been... I mean, just yeah. so wonderful. And again, he has that patience that oh. is just miraculous. Yeah. <laughs> so great. And I like to laugh that, you know, he's a better parent broken than some parents are. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have no doubt by the sounds of it. <laughs> Wouldn't be very hard though. <laughs> no, no, there's some pretty terrible parents out there and it makes me very sad. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, so your family dynamics, so you spend a bit of, um, it's, um, sounds like you, you, that quality time is really important. Like the, the bedtime yeah. routine sounds. So does Ryan um, go to bed uh, with you all at the same time as well? or is Sometimes it... I'd say about 50, 50. It depends he on a lot more rest, right? Yeah. And especially if he um, like has a migraine in the middle of the day uh, or sometimes he'll get hit with insomnia and just can't sleep. Um, and if he, if he can't sleep, he tends to be in his office on the computer. Um, so he won't come to bed at that time. Um, or so Avi can s snuggle in bed with us, with me asleep until daddy comes to bed. So there's times where she's like, no, daddy, stay away. Like, so I can snuggle sleep with mommy. Um, but if he is in bed, she'll be reading Harry Potter to him. Like that's something that they have uh, started doing because Ryan has a hard time reading uh, significant passages. It's just not the enjoy it, enjoyable bit that he used to have. And mm. he loves books and he loves reading. Um, and so that's kind of been a hard adjustment. But Avi gets to read it to him. And so that makes it that bond together, which is very sweet. Um, oh, and they, beautiful. they enjoy that. So yeah, quality time is definitely my daughter's love language and I am all too happy to give that to her. Oh, I just, um, yeah, I think something that we share, that's something that's really important to me as well. Um, and I think my kids, um, have grown up, uh, with that, um, quality, quality strength, a uh, challenge. Yes. Yeah, it's really important. We get, um, every now and then, um, Gavin and I, my husband, we look at each other and it's like, wow, the kids are asking for family days. What? <laughs> what? <cool. laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, nice. uh, there was something in there that you mentioned about Ryan, but it's just gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Okay, excellent. All right. So I'm sure it'll come back to me now. I'm trying to try and regain my thoughts. Never mind. So in terms of, um, wow, so you're just such a, um, like, do you have, okay, so something here, um, in terms of stroke, um, dealing with stroke, you know, for, for those that may have 
um, may be in the same situation as well. Is there anything that, any sort of um, advice or insight or wisdom that you could share for families that may have, you know, just come upon uh, this in their family as well? Yeah, the biggest thing that I've learned is how to be an advocate uh, for your family member. Um, There's so many things that, I mean, just the fact that we identified it as a stroke was because I was paying attention and I talked to somebody. Um, Ask the questions. Uh, It's probably a little bit different in a country that um, maybe has actual health care. But in the doctors work for us. Now there's no me like by all means they're, they are professionals. They have the, the knowledge and the history and stuff, but you know, your family member. Um, so making sure that you are obviously respectful and kind, but don't be afraid to question. Don't be afraid to ask questions to get clarification, to know what your family member's normal is. Um, For example, when we were having major leg pain for Ryan, it was horrible. Like Mm. such an intense pain that he was having every day, constantly. And I was just like, this is not this needs to be fixed. Like there's something wrong. Um, let's find out. Um, and so we did multiple tests and uh, just keeping asking the questions, finding out what else can be done to make sure that their level of care and their level of life is as, as good as it possibly can be. Um, and putting in the work, you know, at, at one point we, found a medication that made that leg pain go away, um, that made his spasticity, which is when your arm just starts shaking for no reason. Um, except then suddenly the insurance decided they didn't want to cover it. Um, and it was about $900 a month without, uh, without, uh, the insurance. Uh, and again, this is America. Um, But like, I sent letters to the manufacturer. Um, I sent letters to the insurance company. Oh Um, my God, Kathy, because that is so important. I'm like, sorry, but it is like, I have conversations with people and they just um, accept, accept that this is what the doctor said and um, this is the way it's got to go. And yeah. yeah, so that's so powerful <laughs> that you went yeah. to that extreme. And and it's not an extreme, it's just the care and being like you're saying. Right. Yeah, sorry, and and because like this this medicine made a difference. Um uh, we tried something a, a different medicine that um was covered by the insurance and it caused him to hallucinate and break out in almost bloody like hives on his face. So that was not an acceptable uh alternative. Um, and I knew that this medicine is what we needed. Um, and now he's on it thanks to a, like a coupon prescription thing. It's called good RX. Anyone in the U S watching this or listening or whatever, GoodRx.com. They have just coupons that are not linked to insurance at all, wow. um, that you can That's use awesome. for different like pharmacies and it's been life changing and uh it makes it forty dollars a month as oh. opposed to nine hundred. Wow. That's so life changing. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Majorly life changing. And that's what's dropped him to have no pain anymore. And but how did you like, come across that information? You put in the time and yeah. And I, I, someone mentioned it on Facebook at some point, like I was complaining about the fact that like, I couldn't get anyone from the, um, the pharmaceutical company to write me back or cause they had no phone number or email address on their website. Yeah. Funny um, that. yeah, it's great. So great. Um, and so I was like, well, have you tried GoodRx? And I was like, no, but I'll try it. And I was just like, this is incredible. Like what an amazing option. 
Wow. So who, who are good RX? Like, are they, do they cover a, a number of pharmaceutical companies? How did they come I, To be honest, I don't know how it works, but it's just coupons. So wow. like, like I'm sure they find coupons from all sorts of either the pharmaceutical companies or like pharmaceutical reps will give them like coupon codes or woohoo. Go good RX. But it something works. That's doing like, something that's doing good in the pharmaceutical world. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but, but it, most importantly, like, you know, your family, like, for example, my, um, my body temperature is normally like a 97, mm -hmm. not 98.6. So when I have a temperature of 99, it's actually closer to a hundred. Now, if you go into the ER and you're like, oh, I have a temperature of a hundred that's totally normal, like, or 99 is normal. And I'm like, no, it's not like, you know what your body does and you know what your family members' bodies do. And that's knowledge that the doctors can't go off of. Um, so you need to be there to advocate for them because they're relying on you as the healthy member. If you're in the ER, if you're in a doctor, long-term care, whatever's going on, don't be afraid to ask those questions and make sure that they know what, what's happening. Yeah. That's awesome advice. So can I just, um, I just want to know a little bit more about Ryan. So is he, um, you know, what sort of like, so his days, does he's happy to just, um, you know, his routines, like he's happy to, it sounds like he's a homebody from what you've described, um, which is really lucky. Um, yeah. and, in terms of, you know, his day to day, he, does he have day, like, are his days generally the same or does he have day like harder days than he has easier days? I think you, you mentioned a little bit that he is um, already, you know, that the pain's not there as you don't have to deal with that as much, but like, um, yeah. what about, you know, the depression, does that um, ever come back or is that sort of something that you yeah, have been we lucky started, with as well? We got back on some depression meds about three years ago, he started yep. recognizing the symptoms coming in and we're like, yeah. Oh good. This means your brain's working again. Yeah. But also like it's bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. you yeah. know, so he's on those meds. <coughs> um, he's been getting, uh, over, for the last year or so, like some anxiety over certain yeah. things, like just yeah. for no reason. Yeah. And, uh, and that usually coincides with some like insomnia and, yeah. and, and the, those sort of things. But we've actually found that um, marijuana, some edibles will soothe that anxiety yeah. uh, and just like kick the switch because before his oh. insomnia would mean that like he'd go eight days with getting 20 minute naps here and there whenever he could and just couldn't sleep. And now we can usually kick that cycle within a day. Wow. Um, that is cool. Yeah. And so we, we've found like, thankfully his days are pretty much exactly the same. Um, oh, good. The level of pain, his level of like mobility. Um, he'll usually take the, we'll go on at least one walk a day. So we'll take the dog out together and we just go for a, a short walk. It's not very much, but you know, it's good exercise, get him moving. Yep he has his stretches and his exercises that he does in the day. And is he, kind of is like, he fairly independent now or is he still requires yeah, he does his like, own self care yeah. um, for the most part? Like, so we have a little kitchen set up in his office because we live in a two level building house mm -hmm. um, and the kitchen's downstairs, but we have like a mini fridge, we have a microwave, we have his coffee pot and like cool. a tea kettle. So like he can, for example, when we were at Walt Disney World, he had all of the food that he needed yeah. um, there. So he yeah. could eat, he could feed yeah. himself. It was not a big deal. He, yeah. So his self-care is fine. He gets yeah. a shower for himself. He can go to the bathroom to yeah. himself, like all of these things. So yeah. it was really nice. Like he's at the point where while we were in Florida, I didn't worry about cool. him not being able to of himself yeah that's not nice. the exception of when our phone didn't ring and like so for about an hour he wasn't answering the phone 
uh, to which I was like, hey, mom, would you go check on him just in case? <laughs> Turns out the phone just wasn't working. But you have those moments where you're like, okay, what's going on? He's not going anywhere. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So it sounds like you guys have definitely worked it out. I mean, it's been uh, quite some time. Um, yeah. that you've had, uh, yeah, that you've had it in the family uh, in terms of having to work out, you know, adapt and, and fill everyone's needs. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a bit about your uh, work life. Now, we touched on your online, your, your, a little bit of your podcasting, but this is going to be great for everyone to get an insight into <laughs> what you do for work and, and maybe open, I, I haven't sort of explained the unicorn side of things. So yeah, <laughs> tell us, share with our, our friends out there why um, you're a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, consider myself an online business manager um, and my tagline is I like to get small businesses, I help small businesses get their shit together. Um, so I come in with my magical unicorn skills of glitter, uh, and just kind of find out how I can help your business. Um, uh, so I will help support, uh, by managing projects or reorganization or like helping get systems in place and processes that allow you to concentrate and you, I mean your business concentrate on what is important and what only you can do. Um, so whether it's a company that makes apps that just doesn't have a foundational like system in place for their like files and like how, what do I do with all of this stuff? How do I get it where I need to go? I come in, I situate it, organize it and then graduate. Like you're graduated. You don't need me anymore. You have everything good in place. I'm here if you do need me, but let me move on and, and, and touch someone else's lives. <laughs> this is so awesome. It's so awesome. And, um, and, and can you tell us, share a little bit, a bit about how, um, you decided to brand yourself as the unicorn, the magical unicorn. I mean, yes. you touched on it a little bit there, but I love it. Uh, for, for a little bit of time, for most of my business life now, it's only been about two years that I've been the unicorn. Um, I started this work at helping just photographers, um, and I would help them with their business and I wanted to branch out. I wanted to help other people and I was already helping them under this brand, but so it didn't, it wasn't fitting. Um, and then one of my clients mentioned was like, oh, Hey, do you know how to do this thing? And I was like, oh yeah, I have experience. I have a lot of experience with that. And she goes, you're like a unicorn. You know how to do everything. And I was like, yes, let's go with it. And I just kind of fully embraced it. Um, I adore the brand and the feel for it because yeah, that's what I do. I am a unicorn. Let me come in and help you, you know, magic guys this all. Uh, and it helps that unicorns are trendy. <laughs> at the like moment they, all sorts they of things. are everywhere and, <laughs> and I love it I love it so much it makes me happy it makes me so happy people will send me pictures of things that they see in stores or like in a uh, envelope I'll get like unicorn stuff and it just makes me happy not just that they're thinking about me but that uh that this has become a great way to identify what I am and who I am and how I can help the people that I'm helping. It's, it's perfect. Fun. It's absolutely perfect. You do go in and yeah, that's the, the role that you do. Yeah. With what you do is you go, you, you know, find the magic that needs to be implemented and that's, I love it. And you're just, your personality, just who you are is just magic. I just love it. Thank you. So, um, and, and, um, I did a little bit, so you've had your business for a while and you mentioned earlier that it was something that you knew would always happen as being the main breadwinner. Um, so when you left that, uh, work situation, starting up your business, was that something that you found, um, to be, uh, just another thing that you just had to get along with or did you, you know, hit any, um, tough times there, any challenges, you know, in, in terms of getting up on your feet and yeah, 
so I had already started the business before his stroke. Um, I was working on it on the side and just kind of trying to grow as much as I could while working a nine to five, you know, so I, I put in those long hours at night and doing the work that I could do. Um, and so when the stroke happened, it kind of opened up my time to allow, uh, to try and grow and really like identify what I wanted to do and how I wanted to help people. Um, and at one point I was given a, another great opportunity with another job. So I was working two part-time jobs and my business at home wow. and my husband and daughter and, and all of this stuff. And again, I just, I just did what I had to do. Um, and so when the other opportunity offered full-time work, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do this. So I stopped working the other part-time retail job that I had and started working full-time for this company. Um, and I was doing that for about a year, uh, when they, well, I was fired for what probably had nothing to actually do with me. Um, I, a coworker's wife apparently said that I said some terrible things, uh, to them, which I was just like, that's not me, but okay. You know, I'll apologize. Absolutely. I'm sorry that whatever, and uh, I was told that I would need to work on our relationship. And then the next day I came in and they said that I was fired. And I was like, okay, so that really had nothing to do with me. Uh, like that, oh, that's not, but that was fine. Uh, because that allowed me to apply for self-employed unemployment, which meant instead of trying to continuously find a job, I could grow my business. Cool. And so that's what I did. And so it's been five years Four. 11 yeah five years now yeah as of September that I have been full-time self-employed Woohoo! that's awesome yeah. yeah yeah and taking care of my family and yeah able to be home and I'm able to go to my daughter's school if she ha needs like help during the day and still get my business done and like do yeah. all of my stuff and plan my schedule the way it needs to be and I and i love that because um you know some some people might lie down and sort of think oh well <laughs> you know it's all too hard right. you know there's the you know and and dead end and you know that's where life's too hard but you found a way to make it work and so you yeah. work your own business and it sounds like you've you've got the business at home and manage life around your business which is the perfect uh, balance by the sound uh, of it. Yeah, it, it's definitely work and I'm constantly like working on it and working on me and working on my business and working on everything that I'm doing. But yeah, like having having a positive outlook and knowing that it's all going to work out and there's abundance in the world for everybody. Like awesome. And yes, I do come from this, you know, as a privileged white person in America, like I am fully aware of how blessed I am and I have the support system that I have and I have all of these things in place that like have been, you know, incredible blessings. But it's a I'm choice, so right? Like it's but, a choice. Yeah, there, on the flip there side, there are people in the same choosing. situation. Yeah. And they could yeah. choose to lie back down and yeah. Woe is me. Yeah. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. There are definitely days where I'm like, woe is me. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to go back to bed because I can't even. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause that's, you know, that's what it's like to be human. And that's real. And yeah. That's, that's why I try on my social media, like my personal social media to try and put out both the bad days and the good days, you know, the good things and the bad things. Life isn't perfect. My situation is far from perfect. And I, I want to make sure that people realize that it's okay to have bad days, that it's okay to feel shitty. It's okay to have a hard time with something. Um, and I and, saw your post this morning from today, like only a few hours ago. It's all right yeah. to say no. Yeah, it's so true. Just say no. Yeah. It's okay. It's a hundred percent. Okay. 
Um, and spoiler alert, that's from my social media manager. <laughs> so I didn't even know what it says but until she posts it. <laughs> so um, I have help in my business on things that I don't need to be the one that does. Like, this is uh, awesome. And that's actually, I wrote a book uh, for that and it's called How to Train a Unicorn. And it's all about having help and getting help in your business and how to hire somebody, you know, what you need to do before you even look to find that person. And then what happens when you do have that person, what do you have them do? And talks about how important communication is and God forbid what, how to stop working with somebody or how to hire someone else. And like all of these pieces in very short, succinct, like e easy to read almost Instagram style pages that are just like, here, this is a awesome treatise. On how to we'll have to share that in the link. Yes. So we'll definitely, that. that is awesome. Um, I, gosh, I could sort of go on and on <laughs> about all of these projects. I'm sure we will um, yeah. be spending more time together. So, um, I, I love that. And I, I wanted to digress a little bit now and um, talk about when we first met and yeah. uh, we had our first video chat and um, I noticed that you were pregnant and you I were glowing. Pregnant. Yeah, but it wasn't <laughs> your own pregnancy. It, it was us. not my own baby. Yeah. Uh, I was a surrogate. I was a surrogate for family friends of mine. Wow. Um, the baby so they were family born. friends. Yes. Yeah. So we've been friends for about seven years. Um, she worked with my mom at the school and his sister dated my brother for a period of time. And so I knew their journey was rough. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I knew that they were having a hard time conceiving and letting the baby stick and just all of this stuff. And they um, tried multiple IVF treatments and they all failed. Her wow. uterus just like do destroyed it. anything mm. and they had a single embryo left and they're like we could let it stay frozen forever uh and just keep paying for that uh we could have them destroy it and destroy this baby that like has been worked so hard for uh or we can try a surrogacy route um and so we tried that <laughs> and wow. and did you know they were thinking of it did they ask you sort of formally or was it something that you knew that you could help them with and sort of volunteered how did that all come about so i had like five years before i had offered like hey if you need some eggs let me know like i because i really didn't enjoy being pregnant i didn't enjoy that whole process it was hard the pregnancy was rough it was very difficult but the labor and birth was easy um but at the point we were my Ryan and I were like, okay, we'll make a decision on if we want to have more children uh, on Avi's third birthday. And of course, his stroke happened before her second one. So we're like, okay, this is the answer. You know, no more children for us, which is totally fine. Yeah. Um, and so, could you, they, could you still? I mean, um, I mean, we could. The hard part is is having a newborn around. Yeah, um, extra. A baby. Yeah, like that's that's really hard with his like yeah. he can't yeah. handle loud noises and you know um, if he has a migraine um yeah he, right the world needs to be silent as silent as it can be and so like the, just and it, we don't we're fine having one child like a hundred percent totally fine which is yeah. how like mentally i was able to do be a surrogate i mean i got i still get asked all the time you know what was it? How could you give up this baby? Like how, how were your emotions with it? And that sort of stuff, like giving, you know, carrying this child for nine, 10 months and then just handing it over. And it's mm. like, first off, it was never my baby. Mm. It's always been theirs. I'm just carrying it for them. Uh, and second, I don't want a child. Like, I don't want another baby in my house. Like that. Yeah. I no. Yeah. I'm, I, you know, we're past diapers. Yeah. And I would I jokingly say, I was like, look, just so you know, I will babysit the heck out of your child, but I'm not changing a diaper. Of course, <laughs> yeah. I've changed like three so far because if I'm babysitting, like, yeah, that's, 
that's how that's going to work. That is cool. (laughs) Yeah. We, I get a life with, you know, my nickname, uh, from him is Oma, which we're aware is like a grandparent, uh, Russian grandma is Oma. Um, but for me, it's for Jackson, it stands for other mother. Okay. But that is my name uh, to him is Oma. Um, and then, uh, Avi gets to call him brother, um, because they're probably not going to have any other children unless they adopt. Um, and so at this point, here's two only children that still get a sibling yeah. in kind of the best way possible. Like that we is see pretty cool. Month, and so she absolutely adores her baby brother <laughs> and he loves her. And so we get to have some of these moments together that are still like she gets to experience a sibling without having to mess with Ryan's head and, and the stress of adding one more caregiving situation into our life because I don't know how I could handle that. That is the perfect, um, yeah, outcome for your family, yeah. for everybody. Really what a win-win. Yep, yeah. So it was a major benefit for sure. Awesome. Um, I just, oh, everything. <laughs> See, this is the thing. I think when you, um, when you allow just and deal with things and just allow it and not fight it, just the universe just delivers what is right and it it's 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 crazy how the universe has worked um i mean so many things layered in place that have allowed so many blessings to come into our life that i I, you can't plan for these things uh you can't plan how life is going to be you can put these thoughts together and ideas for the future but life's going to happen however it's going to happen. And, and while that kind of can suck sometimes, like it's, it's still pretty awesome. Like you could still find some great things, even when shitty things happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why I just, um, yeah, adore you and your story and, and everything about you, Kathy, because yeah what other I mean why would you choose any other way (laughs) always find that silver line life's too hard to try and fight too hard about life like Mm. it's just it, it and like life's too hard to try and fake it so I don't have the energy to pretend like my life is perfect because it's not I mean my house is a disaster don't get me wrong like I have so many faults and failures as a human being um and I can be selfish and I can like I am not a good cook and somehow my family gets fed some days I don't know how (laughs) we just will eat junk food but like I'm still, I'm still doing the best that I can. And I'm going to put that out there in the world, you know, as a performance or whatnot, like whatever it is, like, yes, it is very performative. It is like, Hey, this is who I am. This is what is going on. But that in turn helps me like, so when I have, you know, the reminders and time hop or the memories on Facebook come up, I can remember, Oh yeah. I was having a hard time with this thing, but isn't it great that Ryan doesn't have that same pain anymore? Or, you know, Avi's not getting bullied anymore at school or like all of these things. And by having this public love letter to my life, it allows me to really appreciate the present that's going on and and so that the future can be happy too. I agree. I agree completely. Um, it's very easy just for time to pass and you've forgotten where, how far you've come. So when I have a terrible memory, I have a terrible memory. Mm -hmm. My memory is horrible. And so me too, (laughs) like having these reminders, it's so great. It's so great because I can remember how awesome that was. Uh, I want to know just, um, before we finish up, um, there's a couple of things that I want to cover off just before we finish up. I want to know a little bit more about a Arby. I mean, she's, um, you touched a little bit on, on, you know, how you're just currently, she's having to deal with the, the father figure, um, challenge at the moment, but yeah, 
Tell me about her. She sounds like a, she looks like she's a little bit of a dynamo. Oh, she is. She is so much cooler than I will ever be and definitely cooler than <laughs> I was. That's pretty cool. It, she's really cool. She is an incredible dancer. Um, she loves dancing and she's on the, the studio competition team in my local town and is just amazing at it um she, and she just loves it so much and when she gets when she's performing she goes all out she has the faces so she's like <laughs> like incredible um she's also so incredibly kind and loving and i feel so blessed that that's like i've had moms and parents come up and just be like I love your daughter. She is so kind. And I'm just like, that is the best compliment that you can receive is it, it, it's just a, an assurance that, okay, I'm doing something right. Like something, and a lot of it has to do with her and her personality and how loving she is. But yeah, yeah, I'll take, I'll take some admission too. Like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. She's so, I, she's so self-sufficient and helps oh. her daddy too. And yeah. like, so if I have a meeting or if I'm go, gone to a conference or whatever, she'll help take care of daddy uh, and doesn't complain. Like, yeah, she'll have some days where she's just like, oh, I don't want to walk the dog or I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. But for the most part, like if I ask her to do something for her daddy, she'll do it. Like yeah. no questions asked. And so awesome. that, that giving heart is just, I'm so thankful for. Ah, uh, awesome. I have this, um, I have, yeah, I, you're obviously doing awesome work uh, with your beautiful girl. Cause I, I believe that our children reflect what happens at home. Uh, like, you know, when they're out and about, it's a good reflection of, you know, mum and dad. Yeah. So good for you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> I, what is she like? What is she, is she like the center of your attention? Like, does she run the house when the three of you are together? Is she a bit like the, you know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah she's very much like, yeah this is uh pay attention to me yeah um yeah, yeah. because again her her love language is quality time yeah. and so that means that she wants to spend time with you and yeah. so she'll she's been trying to plan a game night a family game night for a while and it just like keeps not working out because she'll have stuff that ends up coming up at night or I'll do things and, and, and yeah, right. like, yeah. Um, she's yeah, desperate cool. to learn how to cook. Uh, and so I'm trying to teach her as best I can. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting. Um, but I mean, all of these things, she's just so great. She's so, she, I can't wait to see the young woman that she's becoming. It's oh, great. awesome. Yeah. It's, um, Oh, yeah, I'm so proud of you for everything that you do. All right, so let's finish it up. I think you have been so generous with everything that you've shared. I, I think there's a lot of gold that um, just from the adversity that you've had to come from uh, in terms of, you know, your marriage from such a young age, having to deal with the stroke and then your family still be so connected and um loving as well and I know that because of of what I see on social media but from just what you've shared tonight as well um so the way that we're going to wrap up is I've got some questions here and it's just for a bit of fun this okay. is um a little bit of um yeah so just rapid rapid questions there's only 10 questions here we're going to do this in 60 seconds so first answer that comes to mind, I'm going to put my little timer on. And this is <laughs> oh just a, okay. just random questions that I came up with, but I thought this would be a fun way just to finish off and get to know you a little bit as well. So, okay. uh, all right, so timer is, so we've got 60 seconds, so one minute. All right, okay. let's see. I'm not going to go too fast. Let's see how we go. Uh, all right, question one, coffee or cocktail? Oh, cocktails. <laughs> Do you have a favorite one? Um, it, de I'll, I, I tend to enjoy like picking off a special menu. So whatever the, the restaurant or, or bar okay. goes, cool. or I'll, for, if they don't have specials, I'll do a cranberry vodka. Oh, yum. All right. Um, do you have a worst habit? 
Uh, biting my nails. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about yourself? My smile. Beautiful. Who would you most like to sit with on a long flight? Lin Manuel Miranda. Oh, I don't know that person. I'll come back. Um, top place you'd like to visit in the world? Hawaii or us? Well, not. Sorry, I can't do Australia. Their spiders are too big. <laughs> and New Zealand, so <laughs> it's close enough so people can visit. <laughs> oh, we just trod on them. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't. I have severe arachnophobia um, to the point where, like, I will break out in hives, like. <laughs> And oh wow yeah, yeah that's so like serious. so yeah uh so i'll do we'll have to take to the cities. okay there we go are there spi there's not spiders in the city We're no okay. no okay. all right city it is all right so um <laughs> sorry <laughs> railed your questions <laughs> that was my fault too um all right we'll finish off um and your whole pass do you have a whole pass person like would hall pass if brian time? gave you a hall pass do you have any oh oh gosh i don't uh we'll go with dwayne the rock johnson because <laughs> yes. it's never gonna happen but he would be amazing <laughs> um your favorite podcast at the moment <sighs> gonna go with Dubai Friday with Merlin Mann, Alex Cox, and Max Tumpkin, where they have a challenge each week, but it's so much more than that. And the, the chemistry between the three of them is just incredible. And I learn a lot and it's, I laugh. I laugh so much. I love it. I can't wait to check it out. Um, night owl or morning person? I am a morning person. Um, I go to bed at 7.30, so like, <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a lot to keep me out late. Uh, beach babe or ski bunny? Oh, beach babe, I don't like getting cold. I don't like oh, being cold. Oh, cool. Uh, but too. only beach babe if I can be in the shade. Because <laughs> I don't want to be in the sun. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, last one, Star Wars or Disney? Well, Dis Star Wars is Disney, so <laughs> I'll say Disney, so that Star Wars is covered. Oh, it's covered, yes. That's it. That's it from my fast, rapid questions. I'm going to have to edit and learn to do that one a little bit better. But that was awesome. Thank you very much, Kathy. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with me and um, sharing a story. I think there's lots of gold in there for everyone. Thank you so much for asking the, the great questions and really guiding the conversation. You did an amazing job. Oh, awesome. Um, so we'll include some links. Do you want to share where everyone can find you as well? Because we'll put, yeah. pop those links down uh, as well. Um, yeah, um, you can find me um, on social media. I'm usually Mrs. Soup, um, M-R-S-S-O-U-P. And that's because my last name is Campbell, Campbell like the soup. <laughs> um, and you can find links to all of the stuff that I do at kathycampbell.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. And uh, that's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much. It was my pleasure to be here. Thank you.